got that cam chain cover off. There is a gasket on here. I gotta put that off to the side. I can see why this is gonna be so difficult to get those spark plug gaskets back on. And it looks like I almost got it out on the right. No, sorry, the left earlier. Let's see if I can try that again. Because I almost had it. God, that's annoying. Oh, there's no clearance. And you're just scraping those gaskets across. Now we can see the beast within. And now we can actually do a fucking valve adjustment. All right, so if you're just along for the valve adjustment part, this is it. What we've got here is a lock nut type valve setup. That means there's this lock nut on here and then this tap it bolt basically. That's a threaded bolt and we can change the clearance. There's a little bit of clearance right in between there. That's the clearance we're going to be measuring. That's the clearance we're going to be adjusting. This is our exhaust side, side with the exhaust here. And this is the intake side. And these have different clearances based on the side. The exhaust is a higher tolerance. Well, not higher tolerance, sorry. It's a, it's, you want a bigger spacing on there than you do on the intake because these parts are going to get warmer. And as materials get warmer, they generally expand, at least the materials that we're worried about. So what we need to do is get the camshafts in a certain position. Basically, we do not want this cam. If you can see on here, on the intake one, there's a lobe here. And as that moves around, as it pushes onto these, uh, we don't see any of them pushing. Actually, these three are all three that are loose right now. It's not pushing on them. That means that the valves are totally closed. Those springs push the valves up. They're totally closed. As one of those cam lobes comes around and pushes on it, it will open the valves. And we want to measure them when they're closed. We don't want any tension on them. If, it's, if there is tension on them because the lobe's pushing on them, we won't be able, it won't have any tolerance they're going to be touching. So what we're going to do is use our feeler gauges. And we need to get the cams into the correct spot. So the instructions here say, there, that on the other side we can see that there's a couple notches on the end of the cams. You can see them riding in the journals. So walking over here we can see that we've got that notch there. So there's a bigger notch and then there's a stamped line. The big notches I've got on the outside. You might notice I didn't pull the signal generator cover off because I'm not turning this with a wrench. In fact, I'm just spinning the wheel. I put the bad boy in gear. It's a little bit tough to spin it, but that way I didn't have to take the signal generator cover off and risk damaging the gasket on there. I read about that and uh, I guess it's a pretty common thing to do. So here's one right there. You can see that one, that lobe is pushing. So there's gonna be no clearance there. We can't take a measurement on this one. So we could take a measurement on four of our cylinders or four of our sets of valves in the position one, then we'll crank it 180 degrees. The, the cams will change 180 degrees and then we'll be able to get the other four. Uh, manual says that we will be able to get cylinder one intake and exhaust, cylinder two exhaust, and cylinder three intake in position one, and then we'll be able to get cylinder two intake, cylinder three exhaust, and cylinder four intake and exhaust. What we're going to be doing, if you come this far, before you even touch these lock nuts and do anything, take a measurement and write down what you've got. I already did it for this first four. What I found is that I'm mainly within spec, but I do not like where the intakes are on cylinder one. They're right at the bottom, four thousandths of uh, four thousandths to six thousandths of clearance. And if you're going to be anything on a valve adjustment, you want to be on the loose end. A loose end is going to give you more noise, but you're not going to break things nearly as easily as you are if you get to tight. Tight is how you end up breaking valves because those valves never fully unseat, they never cool correctly, and then it ends up breaking the valve. And then, honestly, depending on how expensive the bike is, you may just want to write it off. So what we're going to do to take these measurements is 
on the exhaust, I know I got to be within seven to nine thousandths. And what I did is I take these feeler gauges. So this is going to be an eight thousandths. And you put it between the tappet and the valve. And you see if you can slide it in. And it's sort of a magnetic feel. It's, I mean, that's why they're feeler gauges. So you can see that one is in there now. And I can slide it out. That one's tough. That one went in a little bit easier. Okay. So we know we got eight thousandths on there. Do we got nine thousandths? Valve one on exhaust one. No, don't push that hard. But uh, no, it's not going all the way through. That one it is, but not easily. And I already tried it. Uh, ten thousandths does not fit. So I know that I've got eight thousandths on this one, and I've got nine thousandths on this one. This is where a handy Motion Pro tool is going to come into order. 8 millimeter lock nut, you're going to put it on there, you'll turn it counterclockwise, we'll loosen it, and then through the top we've got this uh, 3 millimeter square that will allow us to adjust actually the positioning of that tappet. So actually let's just go ahead and fuck up uh, this one right here for the video. Okay, we're gonna fuck. Get, oh, I got these on tight. Okay. Okay. So now the lock nut is loose. And if I use my little three millimeter square, I just threw this thing all off. So now I'm gonna have to come back and fix that. Even though it was with intolerance, actually, quite frankly, that's exactly where I wanted to put it. That's what we're gonna be doing. Um, I'm going to go take the rest of the measurements on all of the other ones. I'm going to spin the wheel 180 degrees, or I'm going to get the cams 180 degrees over so I can get the other readings. Write them down, and then we're going to go through for all the ones that we find that are out of adjustment, that are out of tolerance, or quite frankly, any of them that are on the tight end of tolerance. I'm going to bring them all to the loosest end of tolerance, so all the intakes are going to 0 0.006, and all the exhausts are going to 0 0.009. So let's get them measurements. Okay, we need you on the inside. And then we need to make sure that these cam lobes aren't pushing on those things. So let's fight! Round three, fight. Ugh. That looks good there. Okay, that one's off. That one is off. That one's off. That one's on, which is fine, because we don't have these three. And one more over. That one's definitely off. That's the other one. We are in the right position. Just take some more measurements. So you want an example of some valves that are out of spec? Exhaust should be seven to nine thousandths. I'm gonna go at this with the seven thousandths. Can't get it in. Can't get it in. Can barely get it in, not really and can get it in easy. What about six thousandths? It's in. And it's in. Well, I can just tell you, I know the six thousandths fits on all of these. One, two, three, these are all six thousandths. This one's nine thousandths. Nine thousandths is within spec. Six isn't. One, two, and three, all those need to be adjusted. So it's a good thing I'm doing this because, uh, yeah, you don't want to be running tight. If those things keep getting tighter, valve's going to overheat, break, and uh, I'll go run this bike and just throw it into Lake Michigan if that happens. Right, so now it's time to actually do a valve adjustment. So what we're going to do is we're going to loosen up this lock nut. I've already loosened this one. What we're going to be adjusting is this clearance right in here. And we want these to be at nine thousandths. Now the reason I have that second feeler gauge in is because I want to put, I know that this one's at nine thousandths. So I set that one to nine thousandths, I put it there so that if this thing has any pivoting, it's not gonna affect what actually the valve clearance is. It's exactly where I want this one to be. That's why I use two. So then we're gonna use our three millimeter square head on this to actually adjust that clearance right there. And what we want is to get that sort of magnetic feel like that. I can barely pull it, just kind of like that. Now, I've watched a couple of these videos, and something that I don't like that some people do, 
And the reason that this Motion Pro tool exists is that you want to have this tool over the top. Okay, let's just say we set this, okay? We set it and it's all good. And as soon as you go to tighten this lock nut, it ends up turning the tappet screw. And then you're tighter than you thought you were. But you're just like, that's good. No, that's why this tool exists. It's so we could put counter pressure on it. Oh, sorry. It's so we could put counter pressure on it so it doesn't go backwards or forwards as we're making that adjustment. So that's this is right where I want it, right there. So I'm going to put, I'll get the lock nut close to tight. I'll put that over the top. Then I'll put the four millimeter square head. I got to get that right there. Okay, so I can still move it. It's tight, but that's where I want it. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of counterclockwise pressure. I'm not moving it on the square head. And then I'm going to tighten the lock nut with this tool, like that, okay? Now I can come back and torque these out, but let's see if that did it. See, I didn't move it. If you just go and tighten that lock nut without putting that little bit of counter pressure on there, you're gonna end up tightening this closer. You're gonna, you're, you're gonna end up with a smaller tolerance than you expected because turning that lock nut often turns the tappet. So now we know we're at yeah, it just barely gets in there. That's nine thousandths. That's how we want all of the exhaust valves on here. So we're going to go through and do that on every single one of those that I marked down. I'm going to make sure that it doesn't turn in further and we actually make it worse than when we started because we're going to put that a proper amount of counter pressure on that tap. So I've gone through and I've adjusted all the valves. Got my feeler gauges in there and all these red ones, these are the ones I adjusted. So set all of them on the exhaust to nine thousandths. All the intakes I messed with, I ended up going, to, even the one that was five thousandths, I ended up bringing it up to six thousandths, got them tightened up. I didn't see a torque value on the lock nuts, just said tighten the lock nuts. So I'm guessing these have never been done before and it took quite a bit of force to get them off. So I put a good bit of force on the lock nuts. Something that it was interesting when you're actually adjusting these things. If you uh, have the lock nut loose and you keep tightening on the tap, it will actually start compressing the spring. So be wary of that. So once you feel a kind of change in pressure, you've gone a little bit too far. So now what, just since we've been this far, what I want to do, I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to spin it around a couple times and just roll it around get them valves moving and I'm gonna go through and set those cam cam positions one more time make sure that oh, I'm gonna have to keep moving them but make sure that all the clearances are correct make sure all the lock nuts are tightened I know they are because I did them but once you put that engine cover back on the valve cover back on you don't want to be going uh, having to do it again so redouble check those then we're gonna put the top back on but for the valve clearance part, uh, we're done. No, you're gonna help me real quick. All right, this is Chaco. Chaco came over. And I just want one more thing done for the night. I want this valve cover on so that dust doesn't get into it. So I gotta put some of this Suzuki Bond. It's not Suzuki Bond, it's Yamaha Bond? Some kind of Bond. I don't know, they're all the same. I'll goop that shit up in the corners. Actually, I don't wanna goop it up. I want to go nice and light. I should mention, there's two dowel pins in here. Right there, and then one kitty corner to it. Those can pop out. You want to make sure they're in it, and you want to put it in before you put the valve cover back on. For your reference, Chuck out. This has been one of the longer videos I've ever shot because this has taken me several days. <laughs> and you won't know if you did it correctly until you fire the bike up and you see whether or not it rattles like a fucking bear or pisses oil all over the fucking place. So, given my track record on these kind of things, I expect that's exactly what's going to happen. Plus, I lost that fucking feeler gauge somewhere. Can I find it? All right, so this is where you're going to help me. Yeah. Okay, the part I'm worried about 
See these four gaskets? These are the spark plug gaskets? No. I'm worried about one of these. Oh, see that was, uh, I'm worried about one of these popping off and you know falling into it. Oh, because they're not they're nothing holding them in there. No, they're pretty secure on here and they came off fine. But if they fall then it's annoying and you have to go yeah. do it again. Just keep hold this for a second. Are you worried about your hands getting oily? one way. There's a square side. Square side's up front. A round side's on back. So that way. Okay. I'm gonna come to you. It's not easy. But it does fit because I got it to come through. And this is where I don't want to knock one of those fucking gaskets off. Alright. You got it? Push it into it. You take your time and get it pushed into it. Because I see your middle part is there. I heard something fall. What? Did I hear something fall? No, I think we hit one of the wires. Oh, okay. There we go. Does that look there? there. That's, that's 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 it. pretty tight. Okay. We'll finish that tomorrow. But uh, I just wanted to get that on the top, so. Nothing falls into it, and we can lock that feeler gauge in the fucking side of it. So what do you think about that? Not seeing any leaks. So that's good news. Nothing out of the weep holes. Uh, the weep holes were my biggest worry from getting those spark plug gaskets in the wrong spot. But uh, I mean, time will tell. It's too cold to go out and actually ride the thing. But I think the valves have been adjusted. Vroom, vroom. Can't wait till uh, six months from now when winter's over. I actually get to ride it. But that's valve adjustment. If you stayed along this long, uh, happy holidays. Cheers.